Today we will start this build with a large sheet of corrugated plastic. This stuff is great to build with and most importantly, non-toxic. I carefully cut them into two rectangle shapes. One side will be our water inlet and one side will be our water outlet. Once I found a good spot for them in the tank, I went ahead and glued them together. And now to put on our next section that will hide our water pump and water hoses. The reason I decided to build this section last is so I can only use two sections of plastic instead of four. It also allowed me to measure it carefully so that way it's not sticking up too high or too low. Ideally, I wanted to sit flush with the screen when I put it back on. After gluing on one side at a time and filling in any extra cracks with some more glue, this is what you're left with. After allowing the glue to dry and set, I went ahead and capped off the outlet section of our tube and carved a small hole into it which will allow our water hose to run through. Now to hold everything in place, we will be using this Aquascape black silicone. We will be using this to fill in any cracks and to glue down our base, and also applying it to the back part of the tank because this is what will be holding up our background. This stuff does release a very strong odor, and I don't recommend breathing it in, so you want to do this in a well-ventilated area, or preferably outside. Some of you may be wondering, wait a minute, didn't you just say we have to do this outside because of the strong fumes or whatever? And to that I say, well, yes, but I mostly only have time to film at night, and I need to work in a well-lit area. But don't worry, I'm wearing a mask just off screen, and a box fan at the window sending all the fumes outside. Be sure to add a good amount to the back glass because we do not want our background falling down. I recommend using a paint stick to help spread around the silicone. And don't worry about covering up the whole entire thing. You just need a good amount of surface area for the background to cling onto. What I like to do while the silicone is still wet is use the paint stick to kind of tap it on the surface and lift some of the silicone off. That way when the silicone is dry it looks kind of bumpy and rigid and that'll really help the background to stick onto it. Now like I said before, this silicone does release a very strong odor, so we're going to go ahead and take this outside and leave it to dry for at least three days. Now that the tank was odor free and was safe to bring inside, I went ahead and taped off a few areas that I don't want the background spilling onto. And here you can see the silicone looking almost kind of rugged and spiky almost. That's the consistency that you're looking for. Now what we will be using to make our background out of, I will be using this black pond and stone expanding foam. Hey that rhymes. This stuff is really great, I use it in all of my builds. This stuff has a really nice look and once again, non-toxic and animal friendly. Now before I apply the foam, I will be adding small pieces of dry driftwood. This will help bring the background to life and just give it an overall nice look. Since I couldn't find any small pots, I will be using these tiny sauce cups. I find that they work just the same, and lucky for me they're also black so they will fit nicely into the background. And now to set up the driftwood and the cups in a way that looks nice before we start applying the spray foam. Now 
that you're satisfied where everything is set up, it is time to add the spray foam. I recommend using the outlet tube as sort of a point of reference, otherwise you might accidentally end up covering the hole that our water tube has to run through. We want to go ahead and try and cover up the black silicone as much as possible. cracks in the driftwood and just allow the foam to do its thing. Here the foam is still wet but as you can see it's coming out very nicely. Be sure to also cover the white section that hides our water pump and water hoses, but be sure to leave the bottom ones alone. Now that everything is nicely sprayed over, go ahead and let it rest for at least 24 hours. With the foam fully expanded and dry, this is what you're left with. Now originally I was going to carve out the background and give more of a sharp look, but I ended up liking how smooth the surfaces looked. It kind of reminds me of dry lava, so I will be leaving that alone for now. Now with our background set up and ready, it is time to move on to the bottom layer of the tank, which will be the substrate. I'm going to be going half water and half substrate for this build. So of course we need something to separate the two. For that we will be using some mesh filter. Now unfortunately for me I ended up getting the wrong one and ended up being a little bit too thin. So what I did is I cut one piece to the shape that I needed and then I went ahead and cut another identical piece and glued that on top of each other. Just doing what I can with what I got. Now for this one I want to give it more of a wavy look versus just a flat straight line. So I'm going to go ahead and set up this mesh and glue it down and show you what that looks like. Now with our filter mesh set and glued down, we can go ahead and move on to the first layer of the substrate. But first I want to pass the water tube through the hole that we made that will be our water outlet. For that, I will be using this Aquaculture Airline Tubing. It's mainly used for air pumps, but it works for water just as good. I recommend getting one end and passing it through the hole first before cutting it. It's better to have too much sticking out than too little. Once you get it through, it is a little tricky to try to get it to the top. So I used a long pair of feeder tweezers to help fish it out. Now to connect our pump to the inlet part of the tube. Now this may seem like a tiny pump, but trust me, this thing is actually quite strong. And what I like about this one is it has a little suction cup so it sticks to the glass. Well, it's supposed to anyway. thing I like about this pump is the fact that it's USB powered. You can literally plug it into anything that has a USB port and it'll work just fine. But today I'll just be using a standard brick to power our pump. set it up where it's supposed to go. Now that our pump is in place, you want to make sure that none of the hose is sticking out the top. It doesn't matter what side the pump is facing because it'll suck up the water just the same. As you can see I even sprayed the bottom with a little bit of water to help the suction cups to stick to the glass. Now that we have our water pump and water tubes properly set up, it is time to move on to the first layer of our substrate. For that, we will be using these clay balls, also known as Lika balls, <laughs> balls. <laughs> as our first layer of our substrate. Now to set this down and a little bit of editing magic later, we have our first layer of Lika. Now 
the first layer site, we will be running our water tube up under it. And as you can see, there's still a good length of hose left, but we will trim that down later as needed. Lika is very good at making a solid foundation because not only is it lightweight, it is also very good at retaining water. Now to separate our first layer from the second, we will be using some weed barrier. Be sure to push it into any little nooks and crannies, especially the back part over there. Now let's set that up and I'll show you what that looks like. Now with the weed barrier finally set in its place, it is time to add the second layer. And for that I will be using some regular aquarium gravel. I heard that this is to prevent any root rot if you want to plant any live plants in your terrarium. We definitely don't want that happening to our plants, so I'll be sure to add a good amount. As you can see, I try to use building material that you can find at like your local Walmart or hardware store. Because as rare as it might sound, I know not everybody has access to like Amazon or online stores. After the gravel's been set, I went ahead and added another sheet of weed barrier. just to keep it from moving. This will house our last layer of substrate and for that I will be using some bioactive soil. This soil contains a mixture of dirt, sand, coconut fiber, sphagnum moss, and even some wood chips. First I will dump out the contents, mix it around, and spread it around evenly over the mesh. Now this stuff does expand when it gets wet, so I only set a layer that goes about halfway up the mesh itself. You can see I didn't mix up all the sphagnum moss, because I want to use some of it to stuff in our little sauce cups up here. Sphagnum moss is also really good at retaining moisture, so they'll make nice little areas for if you want to plant little plants in here, or if you want to just have a nice little damp hiding spot for small animals to get into. But it's also very flaky, so try to keep it in your substrate area and to not have any fall in the water area. So just be sure to use as much as you need and then take out the rest. cover up our water inlet. For that I will be using a piece of wire mesh that I've already cut to size. But before covering it up I want to add in a layer of filtration. For that I will be using this rolled up piece of filter mesh. The same material used to make our barrier here. This will help our pump from getting clogged up from any debris. And if the mesh itself should ever get too clogged up with junk, I'd just have to take the screen off, take it out, and clean it up. Or maybe even just replacing it with a new roll, depending on how dirty it is. Now to glue on the mesh. With everything covered up in its place, we can now finally begin to work on our rock wall and also positioning our hose and cutting away any extra material we don't need. For the rock wall, I will be using some black porous lava rock. Not only do these rocks look good in any enclosure, but they are extremely lightweight, which makes them really easy to work with. stacking our rocks, I will position the water hose where it is well hidden 
but will also give us a nice even flow of water. I will be gluing down our first set of rocks. This is to keep them from moving and acting as a base for our wall. Here we have our first row set, and as you can see, each rock is glued to one another. What I like to do first is find a spot where the rock will sit on its own, removing it, applying the glue, and then sticking it on. The strings of glue are easy to remove by hand, and don't worry about the spots of glue that we can see. They will all be covered up once we start applying more rocks. Also, make sure the rocks are completely dry. As you can see, these three rocks were still wet, so the glue didn't stick to them very well. But other than that, just keep repeating the process until you have a nice tall wall of lava rock. After a lot of stacking, rocks, and glue, we finally have our wall complete. I've also added a good amount of loose ones, but all the ones in the back are either glued to each other or even glued onto the mesh itself. As you can see, I trimmed down our water hose and have it hidden behind some loose rocks. I made sure not to glue down the hose itself because I want to be able to position it and move it freely. I was originally going to use gravel for the bottom, but I ended up changing my mind halfway and decided to use sand instead, which is why in the next scene you might see bits of gravel scattered around. All the rocks you see here covering our mesh are not glued down. Remember, I still need access to that roll of filter in case I ever need to change it out. Now for the bottom, we will be using play sand. The reason it looks a bit damp is because you want to make sure you wash your sand. I know that might sound a bit weird. But trust me, if you don't, you will end up with murky white water. Not only will it look bad, but it will not be safe for your animals. Depending on how much play sand you need, I recommend getting a bucket or a small tray and rinsing it out at least two to three times, at least until the water stops coming out so white. Now to finish laying in the rest of the sand. have our water area complete, we can now begin to decorate our land area. I will begin by adding in these plastic plants, followed by some real plants. Now the reason I'm adding the plastic ones first is because I will be adding in the water to get the soil damp and ready for any kind of digging and planting. And now to carelessly throw all these plants in here, and oh, would you look at that? They all just so happen to place themselves in here nicely. Now to add in our water and turn on our pump and allow the water to start circulating. When it comes to adding new water in my enclosures, I like using a mixture of what I call half and half. Half distilled water and half normal tap water. gallons for this build, so that would be 2 gallons distilled and 2 gallons of regular tap water. The reason behind that is because distilled water has no minerals and is pure water, whereas tap water has some chlorines in it. So a mixture of the two allows for quicker and safer water that you don't have to let sit around for as long. But we still want our water to settle and give the substrate a chance to absorb some of the water. But now that we've added it, it is safe to turn on our pump. Now with the pump on, we can now set the hose in a nice spot that will give us a nice even flow. And if you feel like the current might be too strong, you can always constrict the water flow a bit by adding a little piece of rock to it. But in this case I find that the flow is just fine, so I will just be removing this rock here. Now to allow the water to circulate for a bit, 
so that way any larger bits of debris can fall to the bottom and so that any of those little white bubbles you see on the surface can go away. Because even though I did the half and half, I don't recommend adding in your animals or even plants within the same day you just added the water. 24 hours later. Now after 24 hours you can see that all the bubbles from the surface are gone and the water itself ended up changing color but I will explain why in just a second. Now as I look for a place to set these lily pad pods, I will admit that I made one or two mistakes. The first mistake I made was not adding a tall enough layer of lita. That would have elevated our substrate a little bit higher so that way it wouldn't get as wet as it is now. And the second mistake I made was not knowing that my bioactive soil came with ground up bits of almond leaf. If you're not familiar with almond leaves, they release something called tannins. Now this won't harm your plants or animals, but it does have a habit of staining your water, leaving it an almost yellowish brown. Originally, I did want some nice crystal clear water, but honestly, I ended up liking this color better. You can choose to leave the substrate bare, but I want to add in a layer of two different types of moss. Now depending on where you live, you can't really just go out and get some moss off the ground and put it into your terrarium because you run a risk of bringing in any invasive insects like ants or even some harmful parasites that'll get your plants or even animals sick. However, this clump of moss I bought from a local breeder, so it already comes preloaded with springtails and even some baby isopods. I couldn't get any footage of them because they're too small. Springtails and isopods are great and some might even say essential for bioactive terrariums. They help clean up and break down any dead plant or organic matter such as dead leaves or even the animal, you know, bathroom stuff. They are nature's cleanup crew and they will not harm your pets. Now to add some floaters into the water. Be sure to only add a few at a time because depending on which floaters you decide to use, these multiply like crazy so later on in the future you might have a bit too much. Now these plants aren't essential to the build, but you can add them if you want to bring a little bit more life to the water. But they can help provide food and even some hiding spots for any animals that you might want to add. to introduce the first set of critters that will be living in this terrarium. Here we have four ghost shrimp, three females and one male. That way when they reproduce, I'll be sure to have a healthy population of shrimp in our environment. And much like the isopods and springtails, these guys are the cleanup crew of the water area and also prevent any algae from forming on the rocks or glass. I've already acclimated these guys to the water conditions, so let's go ahead and place them in. As you can see, they immediately start looking for places to hide, so the cracks in between the rocks will be perfect for them. the next layer of moss and for that I'm using some store-bought frog moss. I've used this brand of moss before and it's never given me any trouble. I think it looks really nice and it can also coexist with any other species of moss. I also added in a mini water filter just to help speed up the water filtration process a bit. I just placed it in front of our water inlet and covered it up with a few more bits of lava rock. I took out the floater so you can see that it actually does seem to be helping clear up the water a bit. So I'll be leaving it in there for now. Now we can finally begin adding in the live plants. Here we have a mix of aquatic and land plants. I made sure to get some plants that will do good in wet conditions and that are animal friendly. So make sure to read the tags before getting them. The best part of building your own terrarium is you can get creative with it. So feel free to add the plants or make any kind of landscape that you want. You don't have to follow my design 100%. 
whether that be leaving the substrate bare or adding moss, adding all plastic plants or all life plants. Because remember, as much as we want our animals to be happy in their new home, ultimately we're building these for us, really. It's a good feeling to watch my pets live happily in a home I've built for them from scratch. Also, before adding the plants, be sure to shake off and wash off the dirt that they already come pre-planted in. We don't want any extra chemicals or fertilizers in our water, we just want them to grow off of the substrate we have for them. I will stop talking for a minute so you can watch as I set up my plants. Now to move on to our water area, and we will begin adding in our aquatic plants. Some of these we will stuff in between the cracks in the rocks, and some of these we will place on the bottom in the sand. I took the floors out so that they wouldn't get in the way as I try to install the plants. I gotta tell you, the plants are what really help bring a terrarium to life. It's kind of hard to believe this used to be an empty tank. And one of my final pieces of decoration, I will be putting in this slab of driftwood. This wood won't rot with the wet conditions, and it will provide a small hiding spot for any small critters, or act as a mini basking spot so any animals can lay on top of it. wrap a piece of artificial vine around our power cord to cover it up a bit. There we have it everybody, our first land and water bioactive build. Can't say it was super quick and super easy to make, but I'm glad I did. A habitat like this will be perfect for frogs, semi-aquatic lizards, salamanders, anoles, basically any animals that like a warm tropical environment. With enough water and proper lighting, this ecosystem will basically take care of itself with little to no maintenance. Which is why over the years I've noticed that bioactive terrariums have gotten really popular. And honestly, I can see why. I'd like to thank Dr. Plants for inspiration behind this build. For it was his tips and tricks that helped me build my very first bioactive enclosure. And I must say I am very happy with the results. I highly suggest checking him out, so I will add a link to his channel in the description below. If you made it to the end of this video, I'd like to say thank you very much. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more animal and terrarium building content. This has been Reptile and More, and again, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys on the next build.